Pokemon Horizons just dropped a bombshell that caught everyone off guard by revealing the anime we thought we'd never get. That's right, it's time for Pokemon Hogwarts. And before getting into the big reveals, the poster reminds us very clearly that instead of Uva Academy, it's Naranja Academy from Pokemon Scarlet that will be canon in the Pokemon anime. It's a good choice since the vibrant orange of Naranja Academy fits the show's cheery vibes and it'll get people's attention when it shows up on promo posters and in commercials. But even better is that basing the anime on Pokemon Scarlet means that Professor Sada should also be canon, which is exactly what everyone wanted. While it's a mystery when Professor Sada might appear, the poster does contain a ton of other hints that we need to unpack. And what's funny is that the poster was actually revealed earlier than intended via the Family Anime Festa 2024 website. And even though they quickly erased the leaked image, the Sprigatito was already out of the bag at that point, so the official Pokemon anime Twitter account had no choice but to post it themselves. But anyways, the poster reads, School life begins from here. And as you can see, Freed, Orla, Molly, Murdoch, and Ludlow are nowhere to be seen, which suggests that this arc will be more focused on the kids. Which is a very good thing since even though I love the adult characters, it's getting hard to ignore just how much Captain Pikachu and Freed are hamstringing the trio's development by saving them from tough situations over and over and over again. And although I doubt the older Rising Volt Tacklers members will disappear altogether, maybe they'll head off somewhere else for another mission or end up doing some odd jobs around town to save up money while Liko, Roy, and Dot go to school. As for the school uniforms, the sweater vest does suit Dot, but I wonder if Liko is seriously going to wear her Indigo Academy uniform at Naranja Academy. I sure hope not because it's it's a major downgrade from both her regular outfit and the Naranja Academy uniform. And regarding Roy, well, even weirder than Roy in a Tilly hat is the title of this arc, Terrastal Debut. Now, obviously, it refers to how Liko, Roy, and Dot will learn how to terrastalize their Pokemon, which was also confirmed in Korokoro's version of the poster, but it's just odd that they didn't call the arc Terastaru Tokun or something along those lines, given that the terrastal phenomenon itself actually debuted way back in episode 11, when Brassius terrastalized his Pokemon in the battle against Roy. Not to mention that Freed has also already terrastalized his Charizard twice in episode 14 and episode 25, and Hamber has even terrastalized his Dusk Noir in the training battle against Amethyo in episode 34. So as far as viewers are concerned, it's not exactly a debut, but it is going to be cool and since the quote unquote bad guy Amethyo just received his own Terra Ball from Hamber, I'd be shocked if we didn't see Liko or Roy battle him at some point later in the arc. And before we break down the other characters and Pokemon in the poster, the big question that is on everyone's minds is what exactly the Terrastal training will even look like. One likely scenario is that the training will be similar to the first class mage exam in Free Ren Beyond Journey's End, where mages need to pass a three stage exam in order to earn their first class qualification. Except that in Pokemon Horizons, they'd be earning their Terra Balls. And the exam objectives could be anything from winning battles to doing fetch quests to winning tickle fights, or even modeled after the trials and grand trials in Pokemon Sun and Moon. This could be where the Paldean Elite Four members who look like they've passed away or merged with Mount Rushmore in the poster enter the story, because the Elite Four are usually portrayed as mentors rather than opponents in the Pokemon anime. And on top of that, unlike edgy mystery men like Lance or Drake, the Elite Four members in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are basically just examiners for the champion assessment. Not to mention that Korokoro outright teases that Liko and friends might be battling them, so I wouldn't be surprised if they play a role in the terrestrial training process. Hassel is also an art instructor at the academy, so we'll probably see him around campus, and I'm sure Poppy will turn up and surprise everyone at some point with just how powerful she is despite being a little kid. Also, in the video games, Rika is the champion assessments receptionist and interviewer, so she could be an important point of contact. But of course, the biggest win is that everyone's favorite, tired, broken salaryman Larry will finally be making his full debut in the anime. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, the evil pantsuit Lady Gita makes Larry do double duty as an Elite Four member and gym leader, which is likely the case in the anime as well, since he had a sneaky cameo at the Treasure Eatery back in episode 18. As for the other gym leaders in the poster, Iono is friends with Dot, so she's already been in three episodes, and of course, she is super popular in Japan, so I'm not surprised to see her again. Also, Brassius steamrolled Roy back when they battled in episode 10, so his return could be an opportunity for Roy to show his growth by beating him in a rematch. And given that Brassius and Hassel are friends, we'll likely see some wholesome interactions between them as well. However, the other two gym leaders are fresh faces to the show. Katie's gym is very close to Mesagoza, and she's also the easiest gym leader in the video games, so she's a good character to bring in early. And given that she runs a bakery, it would be an absolute travesty if she and Murdoch didn't meet each other. But even more exciting than the possibility of a little bakery bonanza is how they're going to handle Grusha, as he's one of the tougher gym leaders, and his cold personality 
Baldi is quite refreshing in a world of really excitable characters, not to mention that him being here suggests that we will be taking a trip up to Glaciado Mountain in the near future. Now, one aspect of the new arc that has people scratching their heads is just why exactly we are now transitioning into a school anime right in the middle of an across the world adventure. I mean, in other coming of age school stories like Harry Potter or My Hero Academia, the first part of the story mostly takes place at school. And then, when everything hits the fan, the characters have to go out to face reality's bigger problems. So you'd think Pokemon Horizons would have happened in reverse, with Liko attending school for the first year or so of the series, then joining the Rising Volt Tacklers to travel the world, befriend the six heroes, battle the explorers, and then head on towards Rakua. But instead, we had a mere 1.1 episodes at the Indigo Academy before going full tilt into the six heroes storyline, and now we are suddenly heading back to school over 40 episodes deep into the anime. Some people are questioning if the anime is changing course due to low viewership, but I think it's just a creative decision that was made from the get-go. Since Liko's departure from everyday school life to travel across the world with the rising vault tacklers was a big character breakthrough that opened her eyes to the world and set her transformation in motion. Her particular story just wouldn't have hit the same if she didn't go through that shock early on. And now we get a taste of the school life anyways, but with the bonus of much more worldly main characters who have a little bit of experience under their belts. Even better, Paldea will not be getting shortchanged like Galar got shortchanged in Journeys. And given that the Liko and Roy's departure arc was 25 episodes long, and the sparkling of Tarapagos will finish in 20 episodes, we can assume that the Terrastal debut arc will last around 20 to 25 episodes as well. But unless a brand new storyline opens up, it kind of looks like Pokemon Horizons is paced to end around the three year mark. So after six months at the Academy, we will probably spend another half year or so tracking down the three remaining heroes, then finally make a break for Rakua to learn the truth about the explorers, Gibeon, Lucius, and what happened to Ash Ketchum's love life. Now, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is the big pile of Pokemon in the poster, and the most noticeable of the bunch is obviously Liko's freshly evolved Florigato. Basically, we knew that Liko's Sprigatito would evolve into Florigato from the Koro Koro pencil set revealed back in February, but now it's 100% confirmed that unlike Ash's Pikachu, Liko's partner in crime will evolve. The funny thing is that Roy's Fuyakoko has not evolved into Crocolore in the poster, which is curious since Roy and Fuyakoko's mission is to get stronger, whereas Liko is more interested in learning about Pokemon's feelings than battling, leveling up, and putting together a solid team. But to be fair, I guess Roy and Fuyakoko haven't been together quite as long, and more importantly, it's great to see that Roy's Wattrel is actually still alive. Moving forward, we have Toad School, Shrudel, and its evolved form Grafai Eye, which are all Pokemon that would be a good fit with Dot if you ask me. And although the Gimme Ghoul could just be a reference to Professor Willow promoting Pokemon Go's Captain Pikachu event in episode 42, it would be cool to see him or another eccentric Gimme Ghoul coin collector working towards getting a Golden Go. Aside from the Gym Leader Pokemon, Capsicid, Tandemouse, and a Fido that likely belongs to Liko's dad, we also see that Nimona's Pomo has evolved into a Pomont, and it's great to see Nimona back in action too. But the most most exciting Pokemon in the poster is Mabostiff, who we all recognize as Arvin's signature Pokemon and best buddy in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It would just be way too epic to see Arvin's story brought to life with full voice acting, especially if they brought in the entire tragedy revolving around his parents, because it's easily one of the best storylines in Pokemon history, and you can get the full breakdown of that story in this video right here. I'll see you there.